Have you ever looked at your best friend and thought, how did we get to this point? I encourage you now, think about your best friend, your favorite person on this planet, and try to think back to your first encounter. I'm gonna strain your memory a bit more. What was your first impression of them? Was it good? Was it bad? Did it change at all? I'm gonna tell a little anecdote, which fits to this, first impressions. And it's the first impression that I made, which I'm not incredibly proud of. But it was on the first day of grade 11. So I started at IB, was very excited. And I walk into English class. I chose English literature. And I walk in, and I'm looking around, looking at the people. I scan the room, I start getting nervous, and then I freeze. And panic starts to rise in me, and I keep on looking, and I realize I have no friends in this class. And that might seem like a minor inconvenience, but to me, huge issue at the time. So I quickly scurry to the first seat that I see, sit down, and I look over, and I sat next to a new girl. And so we exchange polite smiles, and the class commences. So the teacher goes around and decides to ask everyone why we have chosen to take this course. And why would you choose English literature? Because you love books, you love reading, you love analysis, all those answers were given. The girl next to me gave a lovely answer. She loves the English language and some of her favorite books. Lovely answer. And then it comes to me. And to this day, I genuinely cannot explain what possessed me in this moment to give the answer that I gave. I tried to be funny, joke didn't succeed, but here's what I said. I said, I am amazing at literary analysis. You heard that right. I didn't say great, I didn't say good. I said, amazing. And the most embarrassing part of this story is that throughout the two years of taking this course, it turned out that I was anything but amazing at literary analysis. But it's a work in progress. But that's not the point. The point of the story is to show how first impressions are really important. And by me just using a certain adjective, this girl's impression of me was extremely negative. Because let me ask you, what would your first impression of me have been if that was the first thing you ever heard me say? I can tell you what your impression would have been because I asked the girl next to me. Because fast forward a couple of months, we're actually really close friends, and we still look back on this, on this encounter today. And so I asked her, I said, what was your first impression of me? And she said she thought I was extremely arrogant and that she was expecting me to be one of those stereotypical mean girls you find at school. Now, if you know me, you might be chuckling a little bit, because if you know me, you know that my personality and the way that I try to come across is the complete opposite of that description. However, just in a couple of seconds, I made a really bad impression on this girl. So what am I saying? Again, first impressions are really important and they rely on really small details that your brain picks up on that you don't even notice that it does. And so that's what I'm here to talk about today. I'm gonna to talk about first impressions and tips and tricks about how you can make a good one. Because that's important in life as well. For job interviews, university applications, making new friends, making a good impression is really, really crucial. And I've decided to link this to psychology. And I did that because it's one of my biggest passions, something I aspire to study someday as well. And my interest in psychology started from a very young age. I've always been a bit of a people watcher. I'm a very observant person in general. And my mother, who is actually a psychologist, I used to read her old university lectures. And although I would only understand about 50% of what I was reading, it was fascinating nonetheless to me. So that's why I'll be talking about psychology. And I'm gonna give you two options. You can either sit back, relax, and let me fascinate you with this beautiful field of knowledge, which is psychology. Or, if you want to, you could use this as your potential villain origin story, fabricate a whole new persona for yourself, and manipulate any new encounter that you make. 
However, I will leave that choice up to you. So good impressions. How can we make them? Well, here's a tip. The first thing you could do is mirroring. And mirroring is exactly what it sounds like, which is mimicking the behavior of someone you're having a conversation with. And this is effective because it appeals to something in psychology called the chameleon effect. And what the chameleon effect states is that mimicry can automatically lead to liking. Now that doesn't mean that you should copy every single mannerism of a person that you're having a conversation with, because that would make the conversation a bit awkward. However, subtleties should be able to do the trick. But maybe that's not something you feel capable of doing in a conversation. You're not really good at multitasking and you feel like that would just distract you from the conversation. Well, not to worry. I have another trick. This is really simple. One of the simplest acts of kindness, which is compliments. Now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, that's logical. I give someone a compliment, they feel good about themselves, and therefore they like me. However, it's not that simple. What actually happens when you give someone a compliment is a psychological phenomenon which is called spontaneous trait transference. So what does that mean? That means if I give someone a compliment, they will automatically associate the things that I'm saying with me. So if I call someone kind, they will perceive me as kind. Now this works like anything in life, has a light side and a dark side. So it works with positive things and compliments, but it also works the same with negative things. So if you find yourself speaking to someone and you're speaking negatively about someone else maybe, the person you're speaking to will associate those negative things with you. So you have the power to decide the image that you make of yourself in new encounters. So it's quite smart, isn't it? If you give someone a compliment, you're not really complimenting them. You compliment someone and you're actually complimenting yourself. Quite smart. So we've got two things. You could try mirroring, you could try compliments, maybe both. Here's a third thing you could try. And this is actually not really a thing you can try, but it's something that's useful to be aware of because it shows the power that you hold in any conversation that you have. Because would you believe me if I told you that in any new encounter that you make, you're able to set the mood and the tone in that conversation? Now you might not believe me. I do have psychological proof. In psychology, there's something called emotional contagion. And what that means is that humans are highly likely to synchronize their emotions to the ones expressed around them. So if I find myself in a very joyous environment, I'm extremely likely to mimic that behavior or that emotion. And it's the same for other emotions, anger, frustration, sadness. So it works the same for all of them. So that's the power that you hold. Now you might think that sounds very much like empathy, but it's not like empathy. I like to call it empathy junior because it is similar to empathy in sort of a first stage. However, it's not empathy really, because empathy relies on knowing somebody, being able to understand them because you know their past experiences. When you first meet someone, you don't have that advantage. And so what you are able to do though, is mimic their emotions. And that links back to the chameleon effect, right? Not only mimicking their mannerisms, but mimicking their emotions, because that can make a conversation a lot more pleasant. So there you have it. Three things, mimicry, emotional contagion or empathy junior, and compliments. Seems simple, right? But not to everyone. I think we can all relate. We all have our socially awkward moments. And some people are simply more skilled conversationalists than others. And that's normal. That's completely understandable. So what's left for these people? Well, don't worry. I have something that anyone can do. No matter how skilled or confident you feel in your conversationalist skills, here's one last thing that you can do. And the great thing about this thing is, it doesn't require any attention to body language or what you're saying or your facial expression. You don't need to pay attention to anything. So what could that be? It's so simple. The only thing you need to do is wear 
a certain color. Seems impossibly simple, right? But it makes a huge difference. So let me give you some examples. For example, the color red. Now, red is proven to allude to things such as confidence, power, strength, those types of things. So if you wear red, that's an impression you're able to give. It's also proven that men are more likely to be attracted to people that wear red. Now, if you do want to be attractive to a man, I wouldn't recommend showing up in an all red outfit because that's a bit more alarming than anything. However, a little amount of red should be a good attention grabber. But we all have our color biases. We all have a favorite color, and maybe you don't like red. It doesn't suit you, it's not your color. Well, how about blue? So what does blue associate with? Blue associates with things such as calmness, tranquility, and interestingly enough, trustworthiness. Again, don't show up in a whole blue outfit, it's a bit melancholy, but a moderate amount of blue should do the trick. Now, one last example, and I had to be a bit biased here, I chose my favorite color, which is green. Again, a bit biased, but in my opinion, green is the coolest color out there. And that's because green is known to be the stress reliever color. I'm sure everyone has heard of something called the green room, which is a room backstage for performances. And the room is actually physically green because it is proven to be able to relieve stress for performers that are about to go on stage. Again, I will give this disclaimer again. Don't take this to mean that you should wear a whole green outfit. You're not trying to look like the Grinch. However, if you do want to have that stress relieving effect, a moderate amount of green should be enough to do that. So there you have it. Four things you can try to make a better impression. Things that should appeal to people that feel like they are confident conversationalists, and really simple things. And although this seems impossible, your brain truly does pick up on these small details and it is really important in the impressions that you make. So that's good impressions. Now I'm hopeful that no one is thinking to themselves, well, how do I make a bad impression? I'm hoping no one's wondering that. However, I'll still answer the question. How do you make a bad impression? Well, my suggestion would be is to take all the advice that I've just given and do the complete opposite. And there you should have a pretty good Bad impression. Okay, all jokes aside now. If you take one thing away from anything that I've said, let it be the following thing. The one thing to avoid when you're first meeting somebody and you're having a conversation with them, please avoid interrupting them. I think we can universally agree that it's the number one conversation pet peeve. I know it's mine. Don't interrupt people. And here's an interesting fun fact, actually. Men are proven to be three times more likely to interrupt people than women are. But um, do what you will with that information. And even if you do make a bad impression, let's say it's unintentional. You walk away from a conversation and you feel like you messed up your first shot. And you feel bad about it. You didn't want to make a bad impression, but you did. It happens. It happens to all of us. Psychology does have something to calm you. Psychology is something called adaptive optimism. And what that means is humans are proven to be highly likely to give you the benefit of the doubt and not judge your character and morality off of a first encounter. However, I think we can all agree that once you make a first impression of somebody, usually it doesn't really change. But hey, that's okay. Because if you ask anyone to list you five people they like, they can list you just as many people they don't like. And it's like that for everyone. No matter how good of an impression you might make, you're not always gonna be liked by everyone. So I'm not saying you should change your entire behavioral pattern. What I'm trying to do is make you aware of the subtleties that go into first impressions you make. And maybe even make you understand why you have impressions of people. So if you have a good impression of someone, why is that? And maybe if you go away now 
and you make new encounters, you might be more aware of body language and facial expressions. And I can promise you it's very, very interesting to pay attention to these details and realize how they impact how you perceive people. So I'm gonna encourage you to do something that might seem a little bit contradicting, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because some of you might feel discouraged now. You might feel like, but I don't wanna make a bad impression. However, I will still encourage you to go out there and meet as many new people as you can. And try your best, that's all you can do. Try your best to make a good impression. Try to use these tips. I promise it'll make a difference. So I'm gonna dare you to go out there and meet as many new people as you can. Because who knows, in a couple of months, you might look back now to new encounters you've made, and you won't be able to believe how incredibly important some people have become to you where you would have never suspected that a couple months ago. So go out there, meet new people, make good and bad impressions, delve into the unknown. I can promise it'll be worth it. Thank you.